Optimizing your content for search traffic doesn't have to be a mystery. Use all-in-one SEO's true SEO on-page analysis, smart XML sitemaps, and SEO audit checklist to get more traffic to your website effortlessly. Check out all-in-one SEO from the link in the description or scan this QR code on the screen. In this video, I'm going to show you how to embed tweets on your WordPress website in a few different ways and the limitations or you can say the pros and cons of each different method. So watch the video till the end so that you can find out which method is the best for you. And the best part is all of these are free to use. So on my screen here, this is a simple post that I've made on my WordPress website. No content here because I want to embed a tweet here. So what I can do is the first method, I can go to Twitter and find the tweet that I want to embed here. So let's say this is the tweet I found. So what I can do is go here, which is a share icon. I can click share. I can copy the link. So this will copy the link to my clipboard. Or if I click the link here and actually go to the tweet, I can copy the link of the tweet itself. So you can see, I'll just post the browser section here, which is the post or as I say the URL of the tweet. I can copy that as well. Both work the same way. Now, if I come back here on my WordPress website, I can just paste this content in and WordPress will detect that this is a tweet or a link to a tweet and automatically add or convert it into an embed. So let's try it out. And in a couple of seconds, it should automatically be done. Now, this is how it works. Now, in case what you do is, let's say you are already writing in the middle of writing a paragraph that, hey, this is how you something, something, something. And then you add a link to a Twitter post. Sometimes it works, but if you're inside a paragraph post, it might not work. So how to do this manually is easier process. Let me show you. So WordPress detects that this is an embed. So it automatically converts the block into a Twitter embed block. So you can use two different ways to add the same thing. You can either use the Twitter block here, Twitter. So you can go here inside the blocks option, just search for Twitter. And you can just use the Twitter block and it will be added here. Then you can just paste the URL of the Twitter uh, or the tweet that we had here. Similar fashion, you can do the same thing. And instead of the Twitter block, you can just use an embed block. Because embed block is a more general approach. But embed block essentially will convert the block into the X amount of or X type of block that you are actually using. So if you use it for Facebook, it will detect Facebook. If you use Twitter, it will use Twitter. Let me just demonstrate that this works. So if I click the embed block here, I'll click here and I'll click here and click embed. And now this is now here. So if I update the post and if I view the post here, you'll notice that this is now embedded on the site. So this is how easy. This is the first method, but it has some limitations. So let's say if I go here and I want to search for a hashtag, let's say WordPress and I'll search for WordPress. Now this WordPress URL, this is a search, the search or the URL for this particular hashtag search. I want to embed this hashtag search on my website that all the relevant tweets from the hashtag WordPress should show up. So I would try the same way, right? I'll copy the URL here. I'll go back and I'll go back here. I'll delete this and I'll just add the Twitter block once again. Let's try it, Twitter, and I'll try this again. So if I do this here and I'll embed it, it doesn't work. So that's the first limitation. This works for individual tweets, but not for hashtags, uh, cannot create custom feeds on it. So there is the first limitation. So this is method number one. If you want to embed a single tweet on your website, this is how you do it. The second option is a little more versatile. So I'll just delete this here. The second option is to go to this website, which is official from Twitter. It's called Twitter Publish or X Publish. So the URL is publish.twitter.com. I'll place the URL on the screen as well. So you can go ahead and it will be linked in the description as well. And this allows you to have a few different options of embedding tweets on a website. So if I click here, you can embed a post, a profile, a handle, or a hashtag. So let's say, for example, I want to embed all the tweets by WP Beginner on my website. So I'll just type in WP Beginner. I'll click the arrow here. And this will give me options how I can embed this. So you have the embedded timeline or you have the post options. So if I go here, the post option is, hey, follow us or mention us or uh, hashtags relevant to it. But let's say if I go to the timeline option, the timeline is where I can see the timeline of tweets from WP Beginner, which is pretty cool. But I can customize a little bit of this if I want to. So if I set customization options, I have the option of height. So let's say I want to uh, stick with around uh, 2000 pixels height. Oops, sorry, 2000 pixels and around an 800 pixel width because most websites are not very wide and for mobile phones, it's a better way. I can also choose a dark option. So now we have a dark theme and we can also change the language and a couple of other options. But that's about the things you can do here in terms of customization. You don't have a lot of control over what you want to do. 
So click the update button and this will give you a actually code which you need to embed on your site. So if I copy the code here, you'll see a notice here. I'll go back to my site. And now this is an HTML code. This is not an embed code that you can just uh, use it in an embed. You'll just need to use an uh, HTML block or a custom HTML block. So type in forward slash, and type in HTML. This is the block we'll be using, custom HTML. And inside the custom HTML, I'll paste the custom HTML I received from the website. I'll click the preview button to see. It takes a couple of seconds to load and now it's done. So if I now publish, update this, go back to the site, refresh this post here. Now you'll see, you're seeing tweets by WP Beginner and it has the same properties that we configured, even though the height is for some reason not working. So kind of you have all the tweets and your entire page is now way too long. So it works, but it has limited customization. So you can't customize the text. Uh, the colors have, don't have much options, but you can still do a lot with it. Now, the third option is the most versatile. And if you want to have a more controlled experience on your website when it comes to Twitter embeds, this is the feature or this is the plugin you should be using. And it's a completely free plugin. So first I'll go here and I'll just delete this and go back to the site here, here. And I'll install a new plugin on the site. So I'll head to plugins. I'll go to add a new plugin. And inside the add new plugin option, I'll search for a plugin called custom Twitter feeds. And let's search finish. So this is the uh, plugin I'm talking about. It's a completely free plugin by Smash Balloon. So just give you a little bit of a tangent here. If I search Smash Balloon on Google, you'll find the Smash Balloon website here. And they're a pretty cool company where they have just make plugins for embedding social media content on your website. So you have plugins for Facebook feed, Instagram feed, Twitter feed, YouTube feed, TikTok feed, reviews feed, social walls. And they're, they're a premium uh, or all these plugins are premium, but the free versions are also available. So what we are using is the free version of the plugin that you can purchase the full version. So if I just show you, if I go to the Twitter feed here, the Twitter feed options will have, hey, any user's timeline, you can have carousel or masonry layouts advanced filtering options, SEO optimized, GDPR compliance, and 70 plus options. So this is the Twitter feed pro version. So if in case you need it, you can check out this website. I'll link it in the description and the rest of the plugins are also available. We can check out if you need it. Otherwise, the free version should suffice as a beginning uh, or starting out. So I'll just install the free plugin right now on the website. Let's wait for it to finish. And it's installed. Let's also activate the plugin. So now the plugin is installed and you see Twitter feeds show up here. Now, how does Twitter feeds or the plugin works? You can create a variety of feeds on your site. So feed is like, let's say a collection of tweets that you want to show. It can be a hashtag. It can be some other ways that you want to show tweets on your site. And then you decide which feed goes where on your site. So you can have them embedded on a sidebar. You can have them embedded inside a cup, inside a post, inside a category page in the footer. So wherever you want to embed the tweets, you can actually embed or embed that specific feed. So first you have to think about, hey, I want to create a feed. What kind of content uh, do I want to add to the feed? This is where you decide it. So we'll go to the Twitter feeds option here and we'll go to all feeds right now. So I'll click all fields and inside the all fields option, we'll have to start creating a feed. Now, since Twitter changed the API rules, we have to validate our email address with the plugin. Otherwise, uh, it's open to abuse. And there's some, I say, technical uh, mumbo jumbo behind the scenes, which I completely don't understand. But if you click the add new button, you'll have the option to connect uh, your Twitter account with Smash Balloon and your email address will also be verified. So I'll click the connect button here, which will open up this option. Let me just disable my dark mode settings. So this is where I can actually add my email address. So I'll add my email address here. And once I'm done, I'll send a confirmation link. So my confirmation link is sent. So all I do is I'll do is open my email and click on the confirmation link. So I'll just cut that part of the video because that's very obvious. Everybody can follow that. So I click the link in the email and this is what I see. You're about to connect this website with Smash Balloons Twitter service. Please verify this is your domain. I'm using a test website. That's why you see a weird domain name here. But when you do it on your website, your domain name should show up here. And once you see it, you click, yes, it's my domain. And then you will have you'll redirected or re, you'll be redirected to your website. Now, as I was mentioning the API changes here, so you'll see this notice here, 
due to API uh, changes, you're not no longer able to support search, home timeline, hashtag, and other, other feeds. And you'll have to connect our own Twitter app, which charges $100 a month for. So this is a technical change that Twitter has made. Otherwise, this was previously possible to add things to your site. So what I'll do is I'll just go to the user timeline option here. Now, by the way, if you do want to connect uh, a hashtag or other mentions, the second method will suffice. But in this case, if you when you use the user timeline option, you'll have much more uh, customization options on how it shows up and where you can add it to your site. So I just add WP Beginner here as an example, WP Beginner, WP Beginner, oops, double Bs, let's change it. Okay, so once I've added the handle here, which I wanna embed on the site, I'll click next. And this will take us to the field customization options where we'll be able to see uh, what options we have, how do we customize it, and kind of the, all the cosmetic changes we have. So here's some simple tutorials that once you've done, how you embed it, I'll show it to you. Don't worry, so I'll just close this. So now, this is what you see, no tweets found for selected feed sources, okay. So there was an issue here with uh, the actual uh, fetching of the feed, so I refreshed the page a couple of times and now it's showing up. So let me show you what kind of controls you get when it comes to designing your feed. And this is a free version of the plugin, so some things are limited. So first of all, you can change the name of the feed here. So you wanna change this and you wanna name it something that you can remember, so you can change the name here. And let's say uh, at a later time you decide, hey, I don't want to embed WP Beginners uh, like post here, I wanna actually change the handle which this feed is for. So what you can do is go to settings here and go to sources and click edit sources and then you can edit and add these sources here. So change the handle to something else and then this feed will be updated to fetch tweets from that handle. And in the pro version, I believe you can also add multiple sources. You can combine three, four handles and then use them as well. So that's again a cool feature. Going back to settings, we'll first look at the customization options here, which is the visual templates here. Now, if I go to the template option, if I click the default template, you'll see all the different templates available to you in the pro version. The free version, I believe, only supports this one. But if I just click the masonry cards, you'll see, hey, this is how the tweets will look like in a masonry grid. So that's pretty cool. And then you have this the simple carousel feed also. And you have the cards and the showcase and latest tweet and the widget as well. So all these features are available in the pro version of the plugin. The free version supports the default one, which we'll be using right now. So even with that, we can go back and customize and make changes. So if you go to the feed layout, now we have some options here. We can, of course, only choose the free versions. And if you can have number of tweets to display, right now it's set to four, but let's say if I change this to 10, then the feed will refresh and then only, uh, uh, only the 10 feeds or 10 tweets will show up. Now, there are some limits when it comes to uh, Twitter API, you're handling the Twitter API, so you might be seeing this notice. So it will automatically update once this is done. So going back, uh, we'll go to the color scheme options. Now we can change this to a dark mode or custom mode. And in custom mode, you can change everything about the feed. So you can have a specific background color, specific accent color, specific text color, and a couple of links color as well. So if I go to the text color, and I'll just try to make this something like this, dark blue, you see instantly now the tweet is now dark blue. And if I say, let's say go to the background color, and I select, uh, what's the opposite of a brown? If I just do a slightly whitish color, you see now I can completely customize, even in the free version of the plugin, how my tweets will look like or my feed will look like. So this is pretty cool. And that's one of the reasons to use this plugin over just embedding uh, tweets regularly on your site. Going back here, we also have some other options. So you can customize the header portion. You can enable the header first. So if you disable it, you'll see this header part goes away. You can have it standard or you can just keep it on a text thing. So you say, hey, uh, follow us on Twitter. So you can do that you can change the color or you can keep it as a standard header, which is uh, the official, let's say, description of the handle, which shows up. So again, you get the customization options here. Going back, you also can change the tweets. So you have tweet style, you have the box view, you have the regular view, you have the divider options, divider colors, thickness. So let's say you want to add a little bit of a border here, you can add a border here. So again, the idea here being that everything you see about the feed can be completely customizable. So if you have a specific layout on your website, a design on your website, and you wanna use uh, these features to customize it, this is possible with this plugin. The other two methods don't support these kind of features. Then you also have load more button. So you have selected, or we select around 10 different uh, uh, post to show. So if you enable the load more button, more tweets will show up. You will see a load more button you can click. And in the pro version, you can also have an infinite scroll that you can keep scrolling and the feed will automatically keep updating. This is great for load times because when you saw in the publish method, uh, publish.twitter, it loads all the tweets in, a, in the symbol same page. So it definitely, I uh, say, 
it'll affect your load times quite a lot. And this, this way you're selecting and loading only a handful of tweets at a time. So this is easier for your website to actually manage. So this is again, one option here. Then you also have the light box option. So this is a pro feature. So in the light box option, if somebody clicks on a specific tweet, it will open up in a light box and then you can see it on, this is an easier way to actually interact with your uh, Twitter feed. So once again, everything, almost everything about the feed is completely customizable. And if you go to the settings here, you can change the sources, which I already showed to you. And inside the filters as well, you have some excellent features, but they are available in the pro version. So you can include the retweets in the entire handle. So if you retweet something, they'll be shown up here, include replies. And then you can also filter based on, hey, you want to have some words allowed or some words which are blocked. So people, they're trolls on social media all the time. So if somebody's trolling you all the time, you can just add a couple of block listed keywords here. So from your feed, those tweets will be automatically hidden. That's pretty cool, right? So then you have all these options and completely, like, I say, rule-based, uh, I say, control on what tweets to show, what not to show. So you say, hey, any of the loud words and none of the block words or none of the loud words or some of the block words, that's completely up to you. And then you can also hide specific tweets that let's say you just don't want to show that specific tweet here, you can just add links to the tweet or some ID of the tweet here, and then those will be hidden. So essentially this plugin gives you tons of control over what you want to do with your Twitter feed. You also have the advanced options, which I'm not even gonna get into. So, so just to give you an idea, you can add custom CSS classes here. If you wanna customize the style, this completely based on you. That's completely, I say, a, a, a power user feature, but it's still very useful. So. Now we've created the feed. I've shown you what this plugin can do. Even the free version, the pro version has even more features. What you'll need to do is just go and click the save button here. And now you can start embedding this feed anywhere on your site. There are a few different ways to do so. You can use the embed option here. So if you do this, you can add it to a page, add it to a widget, or you can copy a short code here, which is fine. You can also first check out the mobile and tablet previews here, which is also cool. But the easiest way to actually create new feeds and then figure out how what the short code is not going to here and find the embed code. You can just go back to all feeds. So whenever you create a new feed, it'll be uh, or a new short code will be created with that particular feed. So you can use this short code to just embed that feed anywhere on your site. It can be a sidebar, it can be the footer, it can be the main page itself, post itself, or category pages, anywhere you like. So you'll also see some analytics here, how many times you've used this feed, you can edit it, you can delete it, and this is the short code. So you see the name here, so this is a user timeline feed, which we started in the beginning. So what I'll do is just copy the short code by clicking the button here, or you can use your mouse and keyboard, control C, control V. Once this is done, I'll go back to post and I'll create a new post on my site just to demonstrate this feed. So let's open this up, Twitter feed, and I'll just do this. And it'll automatically detect that this is a short code and add the short code here. Now, what you should do if you are writing a paragraph, you have more content, you should use the short code block explicitly. So type the forward slash button, type in short code, and you will see the short code option here. Once the short code option comes up, you just paste it here. And now you can just go and publish this page. And once it's done, you will go and open it up a new tab. And this is now your feed showing up on your website. Pretty cool, right? So this is how you embed tweets on your website, on your WordPress website using three different distinct ways. Copy and paste the URL directly, use uh, Twitter's publishing options or using this wonderful plugin, custom Twitter feeds by Smash Balloon to embed tweets on your website. If you have any questions about still how to embed tweets on your website, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, you can subscribe to the channel for more WordPress education. And I'll see you in the next video. You're watching Yuvraj from WP Beginner. Take care.